Okay. Now. Is this a different list? Yeah, yeah, it, it, yes. Correct. Yeah, actually I've got four or five lists okay. because, yeah, all of us have done it. You so know. you signed up on one list. Yeah, ex yeah oh. exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, and there's a number of lists floating around because, okay. yeah. <laughs> Why did this guy raise my name? <laughs> okay. All right. Now we've get you know so we've been talking about this periodic system, right? Now let me kind of um, let me go through it and just show you what we're talking about here with the periodic system. Kind of compare the two. Now, I, uh, what I want to do at this point in time is just introduce it to you guys. And in chapter six, we'll work more with it, especially the homework. Okay. So, and don't forget. And so here we have the periodic, and here we have the perpetual. So, on the first one, we've been working with the perpetual. When you buy merchandise. You debit the asset and you credit accounts payable, right? Under the periodic, instead of debiting an asset, you debit an expense account. So what it is is you debit an expense. Now, by the way, if they're not sold, there's an adjusting entry that'll put the, that'll move it from the expense back to inventory. But that's when you buy it, you record it as an expense. Okay. When you make us now, when you return stuff to your wholesaler. What you do is, the one we've been working with is you, in this case, what you're doing is the comes payable. Um, oh, I'm sorry, this is where you pay for it. So when you pay for it, what you do is, in this case, the $1,200 that you owe, you qualify for a $24 discount. And of course, as we talked about with, uh, with, with, with Max, uh, that lessens your, the, the cost of your inventory. And then the difference is the cash you sent. Under the periodic now, you have something called purchase discounts. And so it, it accounts payable works the same, cash works the same, but instead of crediting the asset, you're now going to now going to credit purchase discounts. Now purchase discounts, it has a credit because it's a contra expense account. Expenses are debits, right? So a contra expense will have a credit balance. Now the reason, so don't forget. The advantage of the perpetual is all the accounts are updated, so they're current. The advantage of the periodic is it gives you more and better information. So in this case, purchase discounts. Do you guys remember where I said that 210 net 30 was the same as 36 percent ATR? That's quite a bit. So what this tells you is the fact that here it's hard to know whether the discounts were taken or not. It disappears when you post it. Here, they keep track of it. And this is a temporary account, so it'll give you the balance at the end of each year. And so if you manage this company, you own this company, you can say, my purchase discount should be greater than this. These people aren't paying the discount period. We're losing 36% APR. That's a lot of money to lose, right? So it allows you to monitor how this is actually being done better. And here it disappears when you post it. Here it keeps accumulating and then it's closed at the end. Okay? All right. The next one is now when you return stuff to your wholesaler, it's the same thing. So in this case, you return some goods, so you debit accounts pay payable and you credit the inventory. This is the one we've been working with. Under the periodic, again, you debit your accounts payable, but now you credit purchase returns and allowances. Now, the reason this is important is because purchase returns and allowances, that constitute a lot of expense. You went to all the expense of buying the goods, the expense of putting it on your shelf, the expense of discovering that for some reason it was unacceptable, the expense of returning it, and you got nothing to show for it. So if your purchase returns and allowances are too great, you got to look for another supplier. Here, you don't know because it disappears. Here, it keeps it, this is a contra expense account, it's a temporary account, and it keeps accumulating through the year and it's closed, right? Okay? But this will tell you and it gives you good information like, do we have a crappy supplier? Are they giving us stuff we've got to return? And there's all this expense and 
and no uh, corresponding revenue. Okay? For transportation, don't forget, now in both cases, the cost of transportation being added to inventory, but here it's directly added to inventory. Here it's put in transportation in. This account is then transferred to inventory, but again, you keep track of it. And again, what are your shipping costs? Are they in line or have they gotten out of line? So the periodic, again, keeps track of something like that, the perpetual, uh, you know, I hate to say hides it, but it, 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 you know, it, it's hard, to, it, it doesn't give you a total, all right? Now, when you make a sale, the one we've been working with has two entries, all these accounts are updated every sale. Under the periodic, it's a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to sales. So here, and the cost of goods sold is not an account under the periodic, rather it's calculated one time at the end of the year on the income statement, okay? Here, it's an expense that's updated every sale, okay? So again, perpetual has updated accounts, periodic, they're not updated, okay? A sales return does the same thing. So, in this case, the sales returns and allowances, so you have sales returns and allowance, that's a contra revenue account, and accounts receivable, so these pair the same, but it also updates your inventory, okay? Under the periodic. Now, when you, uh, when your customers pay you, it's the same in both cases. Cash is debited for the cash you receive. Sales discounts are debited, and accounts receivable is credited. So they, they work the same in both cases. All right. Let me take a look. All right. Then the other one is the fact that under the perpetual system, when you have shrinkage, that shrinkage converts the ask the amount of shrinkage. So, two hundred fifty dollars worth of merchandise disappeared. That's what shrinkage means. So, what you do is you transfer from the asset, and this is the expense where it's incurred. There's no such adjustment in the payout. Okay. All right. Now. Let me just kind of summarize these things on the board. I'm going to turn on the lights and turn that camera around. And let me just kind of summarize these because I think it puts everything in, a, in a, a better perspective. So what's happening here, turn this, is That's right. And the one asset that's used in both accounts is merchandise inventory. Because it's an asset, it will have a normal debit belt, right? And both accounts use this, and in both accounts it's an asset. Okay? Over here we have liability. And liabilities, uh, they're not affected with this chapter. And then we have owner's equity. Okay. And in our owner's equity, we have a sale, that's the revenue account. And of course, revenue will have a normal credit balance. We have sales, returns, and allowances. That's a contra revenue account, so it'll have a debit balance. <clears throat> and we have a sales discount. Again, that's a contra revenue account, so it has a normal debit balance. Now, both the periodic and the perpetual 
use these accounts in the same exact same manner. So periodic and perpetual. Okay? And they use them in the same exact same way, right? They start out with gross sales, take away sales, returns and allowances, sales discount, and that gives you net sales. Okay? And they used to calculate net sales in the exact same way. So it remembers the top of those financial of those income statements. Okay? Then over here under expenses, you have cost of goods sold. That's an expense. So it has a normal debit balance, and it's an expense, and it's a only in perpetual. So it's the one we've been working with. The account shows up only in the perpetual system. It's an expense. And it's how much you pay for the stuff you turn around and sell. Okay? Now, the next expense we have is purchases. Well, it'll be an okay purchases. And it's an expense, so it has a normal debit balance. Then you have purchase returns. And of course, they're a contra expense, so they'll have a normal credit balance. Okay. And then you have purchase discount. That's a contra expense, so it has a normal credit balance. So these two are contra expense. Okay. Just like these two are contra revenue. And these three are only on the periodic. Okay. All right, let me check in with you. Is that making sense? How all this fits together? And what it is, is the, uh, because, again, the periodic, they're updated every sale, so your accounts are current. I'm sorry, on the perpetual, they're updated every sale, so your accounts are current. On the periodic, they're updated one time at the end of the year, and I'll show you how we do that in a minute. However, they give you a lot better information. This allows you to just know what's going on in your store, okay? Are you taking the purchase discounts or do 36% APR? Are you, do you have too many returns? Okay. Um, all right. So you guys doing good? Now, you've been kind of wondering how in the world, you know, with, uh, with the periodic system, it only calculates the cost of goods sold one time at the end of the year and it does it on the income statement. What does that look like? Has anybody been wondering that? Christian, you've been kind of wondering that? No? I thought for sure you would have wondered. All right, okay. Serious, have you wondered that? I'm sorry, Serene, have you wondered? Okay, never mind, all right. Okay, sounds good. Candy, have you wondered about that? Now, I wondered why we could do the potential in the periodic and the more year thing, it gives you more information. Well, the per because the perpetual, you know how much your account is. So for instance, here's the deal. If you have a store, right, you don't want any more inventory on the shelves than you have to have, okay? Now, you don't want to run out, because if you run out, a customer shows up and can't buy it, they'll go elsewhere for that sale, and they may not come back. So you've lost at least that one sale, and you may have lost that customer, so don't run out. But you don't want any more than you have to. So the perpetual allows you to keep on top of your inventory, right? You know how much is in the back room, so, and you don't want to go below a certain amount as a general rule, all right? The periodic doesn't give you that information. Rather, at the end of the year, you can look back 
and say, here's how I did last year. And you can say, uh, I didn't, you know, that I, I returned too much stuff, I didn't take enough of the discounts, uh, my uh, freight, uh, my, the person who ships my goods is charging me too much. All that information is available, but only at the end of the year. Okay, so I, what some stories do, and it's not uh, uh, common, is they'll do their uh, conduct their day-to-day -day business using the perpetual, and then report it using the periodic, and that's really the best of both worlds. All right, you guys doing good? Okay. All right. So let's take a look at a periodic in. Uh, uh, let's take a look at a periodic income statement, and show you how it calculates the cost of it sold, and it does this on the income statement. It's not any. It's not an actual account name like it was with the. Um, um, it's not an account like it was with the uh, with the perpetual. So here's how this thing works. Now, the, t the two income statements are the same, in that you have net sales, right? And you take away cost of goods sold to get gross margin, take away operating expenses to get net income. Now that's the same with the period perpetual, right? What's different now is the cost of goods sold was an account on the perpetual, and its total goes in here. Its balance, if you will, go in there. On the periodic, we'll calculate the cost of the sold, and here's how it's done. You start out with the inventory at the beginning of the year. Then you add your purchases. That tells you how much is available to sell. Then you subtract your ending inventory, and the difference is how much you did sell, which is cost of goods sold, right? Now, net cost of purchases, how do you calculate that? Well, you start out with your purchases. You subtract your purchase returns and allowances, you subtract your purchase discounts, that's your net purchases, add your freight in, that gives you net cost of purchases. Okay? And this is how it's worked in this scheme of things. Now, when you guys get into managerial accounting, 203, they'll, this, the, the, the managerial accounting will use this scheme of things in all kinds of different contexts simply because it really works well for, for figuring things out, okay? So just to sum up, it's the same as the perpetual in that you have net sales minus cost of goods sold by gross margin, you subtract your operating expenses to get net income. That's the same, okay? What's different is this cost of goods sold in perpetual was an actual account, you put the balance here, and the periodic, you calculate it. And the way you calculate it is you start out with your beginning inventory, you add your purchases, that gives you how much you had available for sale, subtract your ending inventory, which is what you didn't sell, and that tells you the cost of what you did sell, right? And then when you figure the net cost of purchases, you start out with your purchases and you subtract your purchase returns and allowances, you subtract your purchase discounts to get your net purchases, add your freight in to get your net cost of purchases. So both the periodic and the perpetual include the cost of transportation in the cost of goods sold, as well as the value of the inventory, right? Does that make sense? Except here, they know what they're paying their shipper, okay? And maybe they're paying too much. And of course, the problem you have with anything is, you know how prices are always going up? You just get used to it. Except sometimes they creep up out of line, okay? And this allows you to keep it top. How's everybody doing? That makes sense? All right, let's do this. So we're, let's put our, this is the end of chapter five. Why don't we take our 10 minute break and we'll get on to chapter six. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna step past you here and I'll put a pause on the camera. Could you keep an eye on your